So I think we'll start off. Did everybody see the minutes? Did we? Yeah. Yep. Okay. Any any questions? They look good. Yeah. Yeah, they were fine. So I'll take a motion to accept the minutes. Yes. Uh, so moved. There will be a second. Thank you. And we'll all say aye. So yes. uh, we'll, we'll accept the minutes. Uh, we have three warrants. We have a vendor warrant for $56,690.77 and a payroll warrant for $106 thousand six ninety eight and twenty six cents and a payroll deduction warrant for twenty six thousand five hundred and seventy two and sixty cents yeah I have a question about the uh, one that I, I saw the payroll warrant um, ha had a line item that I had never seen before and it was a five hundred dollar line five hundred dollar line item for uh, compensated actions for what uh, for a compensated absence, although the word absence was misspelled. Huh. It was either that or it was a bottle referring to a bottle of absinthe, but I'm gonna guess it was an absinthe. <laughs> yeah. um, uh, in, in the past, that's been a payout. Um, you may recall there was a former policy in a town to reimburse people for sick leave they had not taken. Um, and the fund that we established to pay that out is the compensated absences fund. Uh, we, we no longer have that policy, by the way, Erica, um, but uh, we, we did have a number, uh, so, some employees who, who were uh, owed money from that, and we, we, um, we will be paying out uh, on that for some time. I, I, and, and I don't know why it's on this one in particular. So that wouldn't be an end of the year thing Get paid out at the end of the year or does it, does it occur shortly? Um, after it, the yeah, it, it could be a cleanup for, for, for the plan for paying that out. Cause, cause that, that's on a, that's on a schedule. Good catch. All right. Okay. Other than, other than that, I have no questions, so I'm fine. So I'll make a motion that we accept uh, these uh, three warrants. Yes. So moved. I hear a second, and then we'll all we'll all say aye. Aye. Yes. Nodding yes. Good. Okay. We'll accept the warrants. So meetings attended by select board members. Um, I will always start with you first, Erica. Um, haven't had any since our last meeting. How about you, Phil? Yeah, I had the. Um... You know, thank, thankfully, Christmas and New Year's means people can't have meetings. But um, the the Tuesday, uh, yeah, what was it? Um, sorry, bear with me. Um, yeah, hold on. Tuesday, the 29th. Um, all night long, the long meeting for, with the Deerfield Board of Health um, and the school committees um, about sports, winter sports, and about the vaccinations and about uh, um, uh, reopening, you know, what, what, how long to continue all remote, um, new benchmarks. Uh, it was only about 120 people, members of the public, on the call. It only lasted a few hours um but uh yeah so so the, the um as of yeah as of the 29th all of franklin county had only gotten 500 doses of vaccination apparently the number of first responders alone is 1500 um so we're we uh they got a, they i i imagine in this week they've delivered more but um i, I do know that it wasn't wasn't nearly as rapid and as hopeful as, as, as uh, we had hoped, but, um, but we are going to be well equipped when we do, when, when we do have vaccine, when we do have the vaccines, we are going to be able to fairly rapidly vaccinate the whole town. So, um, and they're, they're saying before June. So 
I guess that's good. Um, and uh, um, the be be benchmarks have been set for school opening so that it, it has more to do with the, 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 the focus will be more on uh, spread within the schools and danger to the school community in particular versus uh, wider community wide or county wide benchmarks. Um, so that the, the, the result of that is that um, it's, they're going to be going back towards, especially with the current trend of de the declining cases, they're going to be going back towards the hybrid model starting the 11th. So it's going to be fully remote until Monday the 11th. And then um, uh, the, there will be another Board of Health meeting this week at some point um, to, to go over the latest, freshest information. But um, the kiddies will be going back to school, we think, on the 11th. So cross your fingers, knock on wood, hope the creek don't rise. So in the um, meeting where you talked about the vaccine, um, I think there yeah. was even a, a recorder article about that. And, yeah. uh, and they talked about the, uh, the firemen of Conway or maybe all the firemen being unhappy. Uh, yes. Did, did that get talked about there? It, uh, just, to, just that there are more people in that category of, you know, they're supposed to have that category that goes first. And there's, um, I, I, guess, I guess they've subdivided within that category in a way that left some people outside of the division line at first. Um, but I, you know, I, I do believe that in this past week, uh, you know, that, that they're getting more or that Great. it should be resolved. Um, but I'm not the last spokesman on that. I will also note that, 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 you know, that was a four town board of health meeting and that once again, and as with the case with every single meeting, our board of health was unable to have a quorum on that meeting. When once again, we were the only town of the four. Hmm. And I also note that we are the only town of our four uh, that has a five person board of health. All the others have gone to three. And at every meeting, we've had at least two boards of health members, just saying might be worth thinking about since they really only have a three, they have a long standing vacancy, um, whatever, that might be something going to a three person model. They would be able to have quorums and do business. It, it has been a, a hindrance that, to getting any kind of tech community unity when one town always has to bow out of the conversation. Do we have five people on our board of health? No. No, and that Marie Eichen just had to resign. That's right. Yeah. So I don't, I don't know whether there's even four at the moment. So Phil, what would that take to make it a three-person board instead of a five-person board? Is that something we'd have to? An act of the town or? meeting, an act of the town meeting, I, as well as a select board vote, I would imagine. But mm -hmm. for sure, a town meeting because the numbers of people was probably in our bylaws or some sort of thing. But mm -hmm. um, Tom would probably know. Yeah, they're elected positions. Um, yeah. So, you, it, you know, it's definitely town meeting. Okay. Yeah, I, I know okay. that, that one of their challenges is that they, they do all of the groundwork themselves. Uh, some other towns have health agents. And uh, Conway has done all of that work itself, uh, which is, you know, uh, food establishment inspections, um, you know, when the Festival of the Hills comes, the, the vendor inspections, um, septic tank installation inspections, um, annual health inspections for, you know, the Conway Inn and things like that. So, so the Board of Health has always done those itself, but what they've done is they've divvied up the work. Um, and um, that's, you know, so they're probably used to, to thinking in those terms. Well, I was like Erica, and I had no official meetings outside, uh, you know, since the last meeting. Uh, thank you, Christmas. Thank you, New Year's. Although, Bruton and I did go up and visit the, the uh, NextAmp solar site. Uh, as you may remember, around a week or so ago, we had a really heavy rainstorm here in town, and uh, a lot of water flowed down the hillside that that, uh, that solar site is built on. And a little of it did spill over into the road, but it always does that, 
you know, has nothing to do with the construction. And there wasn't any silt or construction debris or anything that got washed into the road or that got outside the barrier. But we went up just to make sure the barriers were all in good shape. And, uh, and they all look pretty good. Yeah, there's some that need uh, some staples or a, a new stake or something. And, and next half is up there working on it. Well, uh, I did, go, go ahead. Yeah, I, I also forgot that um, I did, I did um, have a meeting with the school administration just about, uh, I, I was curious that Tom had sent that memo out to everybody letting, letting us know that Massachusetts got a billion dollars in education funding under the COVID Relief Act that was just signed. Um, so I wanted to get an uh, indication of how much of that was coming to Conway. Um, and of course, it turns out not a single penny of it will be. Um, so so th that money is all being distributed according to the Title I formula, which, um, and we don't, we don't have enough socioeconomic diversity to get anything under that formula. We don't have enough poor people um, and we don't have English as second language learners and um, all sorts. So it's really going to help Greenfield. It's really going to help Turner's and uh, Gil Montague and, and uh, uh, Adol. Um, but it's, uh, it's not going to help our school. Uh, I think they say Frontier might get 15,000 out of that. So hooray. Um, yeah. Yeah. I pray that so, we're more fortunate, but you know, there's, there's, there's not all bad. No, there is, a, there was a goodie in it though for us. And that is the, the, the one year's extension in the CARES Act funding. And we still have room for that. And if you remember, I was talking about that, they, they, they're getting comp uh, more uh, computer pads for the kiddies and uh, they, they couldn't get them shipped in time for the December 31st funding deadline of it. And I had, encourage them to use creative more creative thinking whatever but uh they they uh, uh they that got postponed for a year so there will be some expenditures that were in the school budget that will now be able to be moved out of that budget and put into covid stuff um which is that 75 percent reimbursement so that's good great that's yeah so, so how about public comments? I don't see lots of uh, public other than Steve and no public comments. Um, for old business, we have a, an agenda item about the UCC. Tom wrote to the UCC last two weeks ago um, asking them to send us some information about why they were looking for help shoring up the foundation and they didn't write back to us. So. So I would just like to just if we could just be really clear that what we want is the the edu engineering information in particular yeah. that yeah. you know we want whatever study was done whatever written report was done um, and that you know the current highway supervisor the former highway supervisor our police chief all say that doesn't have much if anything to do with the road stable being stable or not so I took a look at it that's like 15 feet away from the road yeah or more. So okay, so we're going to table that and maybe revisit it when Tom does get some information for us. And I do hope we get it. So new business. So the first thing item on our new business is this uh, the beginning our twenty two budget update. So Tom, do you want to walk us through your two items? Uh, well, I think it would probably be best if we waited for the uh, finance committee and especially for uh, Ron Sweet, who, who's going to be on soon. Yeah. Um, so, so if I'm we could go here. to the. Uh... Oh, okay. Hi, Ron. Um, well, we Hi. have uh, we, do, we we don't have uh, most of the finance committee here. I I imagine they're expecting to to come on at six thirty. And uh, again, I apologize for not um, not setting that up the way I did last year uh, right away. Uh, so maybe we could go to the uh, the carbon credit uh, draft solicitation letter. Okay. So is is that is that from you, Phil or, or Tom? Actually, uh, that, that was Tom's that was Tom's idea, and Tom was the draftsman on, with that letter. And 
I thought it was very well written. I, um, you know, when I looked at it again today, I thought maybe um, an, a, an encouraging, just encourage somebody to call with, with questions rather than email, whatever, just make it a little bit more personal. But I have spoken to many, many people um, and uh, about this that, that were on that 100 acre, that I call it members of the 100 acre club. Um, <laughs> And uh, I, I was just really surprised, you know, Boyden, Boyden's yes, Burnett, yes, uh, Lockhead, yes, um, Murphy, yes. Uh, um, I'm, I'm leaving some out. I have it somewhere on paper. But um, but that, that's already more than 1,500 acres. Um, so. So what so what do people think about? Um... We, we've got, you know, about, uh, you know, 40 people outside of the Commonwealth who own 100 acres or more. Um, do, does that seem like a reasonable first letter to go out? I, I just want to make sure that we, you know, treat everybody fairly in town, because this is something that people are going to be able to benefit financially from, um, even if only just a little bit. Um, but, yeah, the, the, you know, it's also yeah, going to require getting a forest stewardship plan done. And maybe we're going to have some money to help people and, and maybe we won't. But, um, uh, you know, so, so, so it, it should be really clear that this is just a preliminary effort to identify a minimum number of acres that we need to go forward. And later we're going to be try, seeking, you know, maximum participation or something like that. Yeah. And just so you know, it's even a little bit more complicated than that Tom because some of the landowners have forest stewardship plans some don't some have very modern up-to-date ones some some don't um, some aren't that keen on getting one at all um, and you know, and I, I, I you know the, and, and then there, there's the possibility um, I, I have reached out to a local nonprofit in, in terms of uh, supplying initial funding for a few landowners to get uh, if they need it. So that's still all pending, but that's um, that Mass Woodlands Institute. Um, so that- Yeah, so th this is just a preliminary indication of interest. Yeah. So have you sent that letter out or are you waiting for- No, no, no. no I that's the select board that's, you know, but um, so all I've done is just call people and, so, and, and have just, you know, just uh, seen people and call people. So that's it. It just, all I've done really is call the people that I know. So. Yeah. Tom, I don't think I've got yeah. that letter. Did you send that to yeah, all of that, that was in the agenda that he put out last week. It was as an exhibit. Okay. As an uh oh, I admit I did not see it. So. Okay. Well, I'll, I'll tweak it a little bit then, um, as Phil has suggested. And uh, and and get that sent out. Great. Yeah, and but I mean it's 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 good. It's good. And I, I you know the the other thing with with all that is that Williamstown has sent out an initial draft of the RFP, and um, there we're I, I you know a little bit confused about some of the language in it, but uh, we're going to talk tomorrow. But, I don't think a day goes by yeah. somebody doesn't ask me about why the state doesn't do more of that kind of thing or, or you know, what we're doing here, what the alternatives are for Chapter 61, things like that. It definitely is. Yeah, you know, and, 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 I, and I ask that. And, and having the land in Chapter 61 is not an obstacle to getting uh, carbon credits. It's, they, it doesn't, that doesn't impact it. So I, um, which, you know, but the, 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 what I also wanted to say is that list. So, so Tom also, as part of that, uh, the agenda that he sent out last week, included the list of the 100 uh, acre club members. And the thing about that is that um, that only uh, that, that only refers to single lots that are that size. And th that list is actually significantly bigger when you add the total number of lots that people have that exceed a hundred. Um, you know, for if, if you look at that, that 
lot for instance that that list for instance there's just one boyden on there for for just a hundred acres um the reality is that there are many smaller lots that are all contiguous to each other that when they act so we don't really have the the exact correct data we, sh we should have something that shows total lots so you know ra rather than just going by the size of the parcel we should have something that it, that is um the, the total size, of the total amount owned by people would, would be a, a clearer thing. But um, I, I know just from the numbers uh, of acres that I was told that individuals in that family own that it's not being captured in that list at all. So, um, so I'm kind of assuming that... Williamstown? Oh. Do they care? Does Williamstown care if it's contiguous or... Um, I, you know, I, I don't know. No. I don't think it, in fact, it is though. So, I mean, that's, I, I would imagine it's a good yeah. thing. You know, that we want to highlight that because it is. And so to the extent that that matters in terms of like foresters putting in bids for the work, um, it's good to highlight that it's all contiguous rather than not contiguous. So, um, and, uh, sort of anticipating that, uh, not all of you are going to want to come in and sign 40 letters. Um, perhaps it would be okay if I signed on behalf of the board. Sure. Sounds good to me. Okay. Thank you. So, Tom, do you have an update on closing town offices? Uh, well, uh, I had, I was looking for a discussion. Um, I had put this on when uh, you know cases were rising and, and it looked it looked really bad. Things have kind of plateaued or even settled down a little bit since then. But um, I was thinking that um, you know if we wanted to set some kind of a metric, like it, it hit um, 351 cases in a two week period at some point and. And that was that was really not good um, for Franklin County. Uh, so I was thinking that if we could establish some kind of a metric like that, that if it happened, um, you know, that that would be the trigger for for um, closing the town offices to the public for some period of time. You know, we're 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 getting kind of close to the goalpost here, and I I don't want to drop the ball to use them football metaphor. Um, so I'm, I'm trying to think, you know, there's, there's this new contagious version, uh, all kinds of things could go wrong as, as, you know, Phil pointed out, the vaccine distribution is not going as planned. So, um, well, there is no plan. So the vaccine distribution is not going as hoped. Yeah. I'll put it that way. So, so um, I was hoping that the select board would at least uh, start to start to think about uh, how we might respond in the future if things started getting hot again. How much traffic does do the town offices normally get? I mean, between your office, Tom, and um, what is it? I, I, I'm sorry, I should know this town hall versus the town offices, the one on Academy Hill Road. I mean, like how, you know, like, what are we talking about? <laughs> Yeah, I, I don't know what their traffic is like. There are not a lot of people who are coming in. Um, and, you know, I think people are being careful by themselves. Uh, I'm, I'm more concerned about just not having that be a possibility. Because if somebody, if somebody did come in here, you know, and, and, you know, we have a sign up sheet for for people who come in so that they can, so that we know in case somebody reports a case, we have good contact tracing ability here if people are actually signing in. Um, but if, if somebody were here and were positive that we knew, then we'd have to close and clean the place. And it, it just gets awfully awkward so, you know, my, my, yeah. So, you know, I, I, I the, the thing, I, if I, 
the one thing that, that I have really learned about this stuff in the past couple of months is just how much better the information is that the boards of health get versus the general public. And, uh, you know, and I, 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 our boards of health, our board, of, they're getting hourly updates sometimes. When, when there's a positive case that they're not sure about, they get calls hourly all night long from the contact tracers to update them on exactly what they find. I mean, like three in the morning, four in the morning, five in the morning. And the, and, you know, and, 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 and what, what they're now, you know, the reason that we switched metrics for the schools away from this sense of larger uh, countywide numbers and towards the, 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 the numbers that are really specific to us as a group, whatever, whichever group we're talking about, that, um, that you know, they, they have such a, a, a fine-tuned sense of like whether it's under control or not, whether it's explicable, where it came from, what, and so, you know, the, the, the reason that we decided like overnight to go fully remote um, right over, right, right uh, after Thanksgiving was because for that, for one night, it, the, 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 it, they no longer, the, the, it was like the feeling was lost containment. Like we couldn't say, and, and that, you know, and, and it, it should be something like this, that our, our level of information is so imperfect. You know, we're waiting for these weekly updates from Boston, whereas they get hourly updates from the people compiling the information with the raw data uh, all week long. And so, you know, it, it, they really need to be our partner in any kind of decision like this. And so well, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to contact them and uh, and ask them, you know, what they what they would feel comfortable contributing to that effort. Yeah, I mean, they because they if there's if there's any risk of community spread they they are on it like they, well, at least they know about it so and, and i would just you know not 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 that like i'm handing off decision making capability or you know whatever to anybody but it's just they have the quality of their information is so much superior to mine or to to ours so that's all and Tom, I'm, go ahead go ahead well i was going to we we have had relatively low case numbers in Conway. I mean, I think we've been under, you know, like 10 cases, like since March, almost for an entire year. So I just feel like it would be a little difficult to establish a threshold based upon what we're seeing in like larger Franklin County or Western Massachusetts. Um, I, yeah, I mean, I just, and, and, you know, we talked about having like a drop box so that people could still conduct town business. And I feel like that is also something we should consider too, if we are gonna make kind of a blank decision about when we shut down mm -hmm. town offices, we'd have to have like a backup plan for people who still like really need to access like town functions. Yeah, and, and even previously we would, we would just say to people, call before you show up and we'll meet you at the front door. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and you know, in, in a sense, um, you know, I, I, I totally hear, you know, Conway, is not doing as bad as, as other people. Um, and, and I get that. I, I just have two things. One is that, um, you know, we got seven cases in two weeks. We had two cases, you know, months ago, and we got seven cases in two weeks. So that kind of got my attention. And I, I don't think that, that Conway is really a bubble. I think that people do travel out of town and that, it does make sense because it's contagious and that's the whole problem that, um, that, that, that you know, it, it, it's reasonable to look at, at, at the region for some things, but, but no, I'm, I'm, I am fine um, with, uh, with seeing what the board of health thinks is might be a good way to go forward. Okay. Sounds good. Mm -hmm. Tom, would this change? the way the town employees come into work or don't come into work, or is it just for the public? This would be just for the public. Uh -huh. Because it seems like you have a good schedule for having somebody there, but not very many worked out. Yeah, I'll, I'll mention that um, uh, the financial office, Jan and Lynn, they're, they're going to be here till three on Mondays and Wednesdays now. And uh, I'll be coming in after that. It, it had, it had just been on Mondays until two on Wednesdays, but they're, 
They need another hour anyway. Great. So items not anticipated, or actually before we do that, uh, Alan, I see you're here. We have three people from the finance committee and Ron's here. Greetings. <laughs> Greetings to you. Can we start the budget? Yeah, um, I just have a couple of introductory remarks and then uh, I can introduce the highway department and Ron's here to talk about that as well. Um, just, just a couple of notes. Yeah. Um, just, just a couple of notes on the, the, uh, the FY 22 general budget situation. Um, uh, I think, um, uh, there, there's, there's something of a sense that things are not as bad as, as we expected them to be. Uh, one of the things I sent out to the select board was, uh, a graph of uh, estimated unemployment for the 01341, uh, yeah, uh, zip code. And um, it, it does not include Conway residents who get their mail in Shelburne Falls or Williamsburg, but you know, it's pretty clear there was a really high early spike. We were, we were around 20 and it went up to around 160 and then it came back down and then it went back up a little bit. So we're now uh, a little over 40 as opposed to a little under 20. So we're still, you know, double the unemployment we had, but it's, uh, it's better than a lot of places. And so that's a good indicator. Uh, we did have good FY21 taxes so far. So that's another good indicator. So um, I just, um, and of course, you know, uh, level funding in 21. The, the Massachusetts 21 budget is coming in over what was anticipated. So uh, I think everybody made a lot of conservative estimates and we're doing better than those. And that's a good thing. Um, so just I just wanted to make those observations that things are are not terrible. <laughs> so that's a good thing. Um, you know, we, we as Phil pointed out again, um, the vaccine distribution is not going as expected. So, you know, I fully expect vaccines to continue to be administered into, into FY22. Um, but at least we know that, you know, the technology is here. And, uh, you know, if we can work on the distribution, then by FY22, um, we could have a vaccinated population or as vaccinated as it's going to get. So that's... Um, that's a good indication, um, you know, a better outcome than than we feared earlier. Uh, if I can move on to uh, highway department business, uh, there there are two budgets involved. There's the highway budget, and there's also the building maintenance budget. And usually they're quite separate. Um, and uh, the building maintenance budget has been very steady. Uh, but uh, we're proposing something a little bit different this year that affects both budgets. Um, uh, we're proposing a, uh, a realignment of the staff and an, uh, and an enhancement of the staff. Uh, the custodian is now 22 hours a week. It's a benefited position. And we're proposing bringing in someone who would do not only custodial duties, but also building maintenance duties and um, and uh, fill in with the highway department as a laborer when necessary. So this would be a very flexible position. And there are, there are often times when, you know, the highway department could use somebody extra. And there are certainly times when we ask for something to be done, you know, in a town building and nobody's available to do it for quite some time. So this is meant to help out with some flexibility. Um, so that's why the, in, in the proposed budgets here, the custodian just disappears. There's no more line item in the building maintenance budget, but the highway hourly budget goes up by that amount 
plus the amount necessary to make it into a full-time job. Again, the position is already benefited, so this is a relatively inexpensive way to get what we think is a much more uh, effective staff. Um, I don't know if uh, Ron wants to add anything to that, but I thought I'd introduce the subject. No, you did a real good job explaining it. Um, it's it's an increase of $17,833 total to the um, when you subtract them what we already pay for custodian salary and add it into the highway. It's an extra $17,833. Um, Tom, could you please display you know, that this budget the, the budget page that we're talking about? On the screen? Yes. Didn't, um, didn't, we, pay, yeah. didn't, we, pay the, didn't we pay for the version of Zoom with all the extras? I'm sure we uh, did. Yeah. Um, uh, I'll, I'll just put up the, uh, the highway department for now, because the, the, the building maintenance is the same without that, you know. So is there, this is what I'm trying to understand. There's a, there's a building maintenance in the general budget. And what you're proposing is that this highway department position would take care of building maintenance, not just for highway department buildings, but other town buildings? That is Ron's responsibility. Yes. That person, the, the person we would be, would be um, doing the maintenance in all of the town buildings. Okay. It's not just the highway department. It's all the town hall, town office. Um, and is that already that already is part of the highway department budget, or is that part of the general town? No, it's budget? part. It's part of the building maintenance budget, which okay. I'm in charge of. Okay. So you know, the, the, there's a couple things about this. I mean, that first of all, you know, I, um, when when. Uh, I, when when Deerfield, I remember when Deerfield built their their town garage, their nine million dollar garage mahal, mm -hmm. and um, and uh, and and they were roundly ridiculed for also uh, hiring a full time custodian for that building at the same time, and and I remember that we said like oh you know we're going to do things differently, and it just you know I, I I didn't even know that our custodian was full time. I don't remember that. Um, is that new? Is no, that custodian is not full time. A custodian is twenty two hours a week. Yeah, right. Sorry, go so on. Is, so, so is it? So, but she's, but, a, but she's benefited. But she's benefited. So, and right. from what I, way I see it is, we're already paying all the benefits for somebody working twenty two hours. It wouldn't cost the town any more in benefits if we bump that up and it just, to me, it doesn't make sense to be paying part um, somebody less than 40 hours, a benefited position. We might, we should make it a full time or 40 hour position so that we get the full benefits of paying the extra benefits that we pay. All right, so, so, I, I, I'm really, I'm surprised that we have a 22 hour position that's benefited. Yeah. And I agree. it wasn't made a 40 hour in the first place. Yeah, I agree. Um, so the, so, but, but explain how, so I'm, I'm just the, your, the, the labor line item, this, the labor category subtotal goes up 38,000. Um, yes. So, so you take $17,833 out of the, building maintenance budget and put into there and that's where the difference of oh so I'm sorry it's nineteen thousand six hundred and seven dollar difference that would be added to the highway salary yes. budget or hourly wage budget so it, it's nineteen thousand six hundred and seven dollars I'm sorry I gave you the wrong number before so we're talking yeah, for, about for, eliminating the part-time custodian position and basically creating a new position for the highway department that would be 
custodian and also fill in gaps for the highway department as well? Correct. And more, more, we're, we'll be looking for somebody that's capable of doing more building maintenance to get more things done in the buildings by, yeah. a, um, by the employee. Right now, we're very limited in what the custodian does. Um, you know, it's basically a custodial position. It's not a maintenance position. So this, and I assume- 22 this hours is a lot of hours for cleaning a building, the two buildings that we have. Tom or Ron, how come you moved the position from the from the town building maintenance budget to the highway department budget? I, I mean, I think that's what makes it more confusing. It, it did, I did that because it just would, in the whole way we do our payroll and all that stuff, and to add, I just figured it would be easier if it was all under the highway budget control for the salary, for the hourly, instead of trying to split it up between the two departments. Okay. It's so, you know, so, but, but Ron, Ron when, when, if, if, if you're talking about spending the extra 19,000 to make that, per, that, that uh, 40 hour or you know, full-time equivalent, um, the, w wouldn't that person be do, doing work that would come off the budget in other places, like mowing, things like that? Um, well, no, I'm, it wouldn't include mowing and stuff like that. I mean, that we, we hire that out. Um, so that probably, I mean, there may be small mowing projects that would be come under that, that person would be doing. Um, but it's not going to take the place of our mowing. Like, like the, the cemeteries? A, well, no, the cemeteries are cemeteries and the ball fields and the town office and all them are done. We hire them. It's if we were going to put, put all the mowings into the and take care of it ourselves, that one person probably couldn't handle that and everything else. And and there's the extra equipment we'd have to get. Right. Uh, maybe so I didn't understand your question right. Well, I... I I'm I'm trying to figure out like what the other what what the person would be doing, uh, with with that what what the town would be getting for that nineteen thousand dollars a year and why it's a good what why you believe it's a good thing I'm I'm still not clear on, um, on that. All right. So I I would like to have somebody that could do some painting inside and outside of buildings, mm -hmm. uh, just general maintenance stuff in the buildings. Um, other than custodial stuff. And then also it, one of the big things would be the winter time, um, plowing and helping out with the duties that we have as far as winter time, like, uh, well, we clean the sidewalks. So I would like that person to be trained on a snowblower so that that person can take care of the sidewalks along with, you know, all the entryways and you know for the buildings that the custodian does now um and then if we need extra help you know with our general plowing and stuff that person would be available so we currently have a part-time benefited custodian position correct right correct and, that and ron you oversee planning that budget. on retiring And that, okay, she is planning so, on retiring so, in September. Okay. So what you're proposing is to, instead of having a part-time benefited custodial position, having a full-time maintenance custodial position, which isn't going to cost us any more benefits because we're paying those already, um, 
but this would basically expand the job description and the job duties so that the person wouldn't just be responsible for cleaning, they would do snow plowing, they could do painting, they could do general maintenance, or they could um, fill in wherever the road crew needs them, correct? Yes, correct. And, and we are working on a job description with the personnel committee. Uh, we don't have that ready yet, but um, uh, we, we should have it ready in a week or two. So, I, and I, you know, I guess my other question is, so, so, so this would amount to something like a, a 5% raise on this for, for, for the labor subtotal category in a, in a pandemic year. I mean, I, is, is there a reason why it's like this, why it's like this year that this was brought forward? And, like, yes, because the custodian is retiring this year in September. So we will so have to be finding somebody... It seems like if, if ever there was a time to reevaluate this job description, like now is now is it? Even though it is a pandemic year. <laughs> Ron, yeah, that, that, is, that's what we thought. My guess for what Phil's getting at is: is there really, you know, more work that has to get done that this person is going to pick up? I, I, I mean, you know. And I can easily believe that you have a hard time, you know, doing the building maintenance on top of everything else. Yes, I, I, I mean, there's a lot of things that should be getting done in the building that's not getting done. Right. Um, yeah, there are repairs that have been waiting for years here. You know, they're not, they're not of, they're not so urgent that they have to be done when they are, then we do them. But, um, and you know, when I, um, back when I started, I was doing the building maintenance function and I had to supervise the, the, um, the repair of the roof of the town office and the town hall. And that was extremely awkward for me, um, trying to be out and in at the same time. And, um, really not knowing the field myself. So the idea would be to get somebody who was, you know, pretty skilled in doing things. And, and the custodial work would be more secondary. The building maintenance and highway support, uh, I'm looking at it, is more primary. Uh, it, you know, it doesn't take much to do the actual just custodial work if, if, you, if you look at it just like that, but then asking people, you know, well, can you do this? Can you do this extra? Um, you know, you, pretty soon you want somebody who actually knows what they're doing when you, because otherwise it's not going to be a good job and it's, it's, it's you know, it's not going to work out in the long run. Um, when does the personnel committee expect to have a job description ready? Well, we're meeting on Wednesday and um we'll see uh if they if they like what we have or or we we can get through it and have just a few tweaks that would be great um uh if not we'll have to meet again if they have you know some substantial um issues they need addressed so uh, t t tom has did you ever consider keeping the position separate except g going to have you know go keeping them both part-time and unbenefited? I don't think we'd get uh, as good applicants for either position. I have a question, uh, Tom, and that would be, and are, are there any other towns that have done what we're proposing to do, like namely Waitley or Sunderland? Size um, and, and Northfield is the only one that I know of, uh, but that was more, um, that wasn't even custodial. Uh, that was just having a building maintenance person work with the highway department. Mm -hmm. So that person was half time building maintenance and half time highway. Okay. And they, they still have that. All right. Uh, but, yeah. but offhand, I don't, I don't know of, of others in the area. Thank you. I have a follow-on question. That is, would you have any idea for thirty-seven thousand four hundred forty dollars a year what type of uh, 
what type of qualifications you're looking for in terms of the ability to uh, supervise permitting, permanent work, or, or uh, licensed professionals, namely plumbing and electrician? I'm just asking. I mean, I don't know. But it seems to me on the, on the low side to that type of uh, skill set. That would still fall under me. That I would still be in charge of the person. Uh -huh. So that anything to do with that kind of stuff, that I would still handle that. Thank you. So the uh, school print, who, who does the uh, custodian now report to for uh, the punch list of what's to do in the routine and this and that at the Conway Grammar School, Ron? Have you any, any idea? Me. I have no idea what happens at the school. The school is not part of. Yeah. All right. Thank you. I, the school, I believe the, the school has their own custodian. Yeah, the school custodian reports to the school committee. And it's designated employee, the superintendent and principal. Thank you. We need to clone Bruce Jewinette. That's what we need. <laughs> um, I, yeah. Well, I, I, do we need to make a decision about this now? I mean, I feel like I would like no. to see the job description by the that comes from the personnel committee before really making any decision. About oh that. yeah, yeah. No, um, no job description. Just, just this is more uh, conceptual. Okay. So you know, all the questions you guys are asking are absolutely the right questions. Is it possible uh, to run budgets just like this and, and, you know, and Ron or whoever will come in and answer questions? Yeah, this is, uh, we're like Santa Claus here with all the wish lists right now. I mean, we'll see who's <laughs> naughty and nice. I'm, I'm totally new to this. This is no, like, no, I mean, yeah. I'm just, I'm still <laughs> I, I have a question, Tom, that is, is it possible for um, someone or two couple of people from the personnel committee to maybe join us when we get to the description and because uh, we're going to be revisiting the highway budget, I presume, sometime, what, maybe in, uh, in February or March. We usually do visit us. Well, I, I am happy to note that the Finance Committee has a liaison to the Personnel Committee, and that is Steve. And I'm sure that um, I hope he's going to be around over the next few weeks and can... Uh, can be the person who uh, who fills in. I mean, that's that's one of the reasons to have these positions be liaisons. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, that's great. Uh, if you know, if that's okay with you, Steve, I I can well, Steve, I can ask Susan if you want. But. In preference <laughs> for Wednesday's meeting of the personnel committee, you did send a um, job description around, so uh, that's there if you want to share it, Tom. Or anything, I don't know, but that needs action by the personnel committee first. Yes, yes. I, I um, what I would prefer is to be able to come to the select board and the finance committee with a document that has already been reviewed by the personnel committee and any changes that that committee has uh, incorporated into it before it's it's shared more broadly. Okay. Ron, Ron, are you are is is your department fully staffed now and? Did you, did you have problems or not problems, but was, was it tough to find uh, full, you know, to, to fully staff your department during this year? Um, yes, I, I'm still down a person. I'm the position that is open right now is a mechanic truck driver laborer. Um, I've had zero response to that position. Um, things have been really busy for me, and um, I'm also down my assistant, and things have been really hard for me. So trying to get things happening has been slow. Um, I, I know that the unemployment, when you give somebody all that extra money for being on unemployment, nobody's going to go looking for a job. And I'm sure that that has a big impact on why. It, you know, we can't find somebody. Uh, I mean, I'm I'm now looking into other places to advertise, but it's kind of a hard position because we need somebody local. Cool. 
Yeah, and th this is for your uh, um, truck driver equipment operator, right? And uh, mechanic, yes. Oh, the mechanic. mechanic. Okay, right, right. And, and that's the one that we changed the job description of for a few months ago, right? Yes, correct. Yeah. Hmm. I don't know. Uh, I'm going to start actively really looking to find, you know, get get things out there, find places to advertise that hopefully we get something. Well, I, th I think I mentioned there's a couple of community colleges in Maine that have large equipment mechanic uh, programs. Right. We'll see if we can get anyone yeah. to move down here. Yeah. <laughs> they, they'd have to for, they'd have to quarantine for fourteen days before their job interview. <laughs> Zoom. Do it by oh, Zoom. You can, uh, there you go. Oh yeah. Uh, okay. Are there any so, other questions uh, for Ron? Yeah, I was just going to say. Aside from that, the budget's the same as as this year. Yeah. Both no, but, budgets are yes, but but if but if you had a position that was open for months, shouldn't there be, um, I don't know, uh, un unspent monies for in the in the labor department? Oh, I'm sure at the end of the year, the um, some money will go back into the general fund, whatever's not spent. Because the salaries are. A separate budget now, so I can't use it for anything else, like I used to be able to. You know, before I used to be able to, you know, hire or do hire uh, temporary help and stuff like that. Well, I probably could do temporary. Well, hire a contractor. I could do things like that with the money. I can't anymore because they got separated. So. That money, I, if I don't spend it, just goes back to the general fund, which I'm sure this year there's going to be a considerable amount of money going back. Mike, Mike Cicciolo will give out the, the December numbers probably in the next couple of weeks. We'll figure out how we are year-to-date versus budget, you know, for the six months end of December 31st. We'll figure it out. Is it possible, Ron, and then also, Steve, if you can share with your fellow personnel committee members, just in the uh, job description, we will detail in terms of the uh, types of skills that would be needed to properly oversee the uh, building maintenance, please, if you could. That's really important because um, everywhere there's shortages of, of people, electricians, plumbers, in the building trades, skilled people. I'm hearing it all over and just not in Franklin County, all up and down the valley. Right. And... Um, so I'm concerned about the uh, competitiveness of what we're willing to offer versus what we can get. That's all. Thank, thank you. Well, we we won't be looking for a licensed person because the, there's nowhere near enough money for. And then if you were thinking of, you know, a license for every for all three professions, that can't happen. I mean, it, <laughs> we'd need to give them a hundred dollars an hour if somebody had that. We're just looking for somebody that has some kind of general understanding of the trades. Um, not not a licensed person, but you know, there's a difference between being licensed and understanding um, simple or common parts of the job, parts of the plumbing and electrical industry. Understood. Thank you. And Ron, what do you pay an hour? I have had the, what I've figured for budget was $18 an hour for that uh -huh. position. But here's the other thing. I mean, with minimum wage keep going up and nothing's changing in any of my departments, money, you know, dollar wise, it's getting tougher and tougher. I mean, it's what thirteen fifty now an hour for minimum wage, and not that I'm complaining about the minimum wage. It just seems like we're we're getting closer and closer to minimum as the years go on here, and it, it makes it tough when you're trying to find people. 
Yeah, if 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 you feel the need to, to, to increase wages on that basis, um, please do it gradually over a period of years. <laughs> Um, because if you just if you if you just try to keep the lid on it, um, and then you have to do it in one fell swoop, those can be really ugly budget numbers. Well, um, one of the things that I was told in the beginning was that I don't have control over salary pay, so that should be coming from above. If the, I'm it should be it should be coming from above to make these suggestions about increasing the pay as far as where Wait, everybody you, thinks we you should mean be. mean us or do you mean Tom? Well, probably both. I'm <laughs> guessing. I don't know. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, well, you may recall, I, uh, Bob. Uh, I, I think you were around when uh, I brought a compensation schedule to the board. Were you around for that? Uh, the board uh, did not. They accepted a classification. Um, they accepted job descriptions and a classification scheme, but not the compensation plan, which um, interestingly was not a grade step plan. Um, but was based on uh, comparable towns, and it would it would definitely entail you know just an annual survey, and then as as Phil said, you know adjustments as necessary. Some years you might adjust, some years you might not. Um, but it was you know it's sort of intended to keep Conway at least at the middle of its um, of its peers more or less, and. Uh, you know, I, I've, I've tried to implement that uh, with all the positions as we've had to change things, uh, but without a policy, um, you know, we're doing it, you know, one off like this instead of not having to, instead of having a set way of doing it. I'll be happy to bring that back if, if anyone's interested. I'll, I'll, well, I'll bring I, that up with the personnel committee again. I, I think one one of the things that, you know, that, that we should keep in mind, you know, we, we haven't talked about percentage increases at all, but you know, everybody can, uh, by looking at the, the contracts that are on file in our office, that, you know, this is a year contractually with our teachers and our instructional assistants, that they are, it's a 2% year for them. And historically, uh, um, uh, when it's a 2% year for the teachers, it's uh, in that general ballpark for town employees. Um, I think that's a safe statement to make. I, yeah, I, I, and that, um, like, you know, l la last year, last year we did ask the town employees to take a zero percent. Um, I, 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 I don't, uh, you know, I, I, I've talked to the board about the, you know, uh, the, um, my, 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 uh, my, my feeling that, that, you know, that it turned out not to be necessary. These, we saved sixteen thousand dollars, and we uh, we caused significant pain for our employees, um, and and that that sacrifice turned out not to have been necessary. So I mean, I you know, I, I I'll put this out there now. I'd like to take to take a look at doing something to make up a little bit for what we took from them, because the time may come like next year when we're going to need them to take a zero percent again. But um, but uh, you know. Uh, that, I mean, that's a separate thing, but I just want to put that out there now, that, especially because the finance committee probably hasn't heard it at all. So, um, but, well, but here's a person we can't hire, and you know, is 18 the right number? Or, Ron, would it be easier for you to hire somebody at 20, or is that not the problem? Um, definitely makes it easier when the, you make a pay appeasing to people. You know, looking. I mean, the, the the problem with right now is the private industry. Their pay for everything out there is so much higher than public. That that's why we have such a hard time. You know, 25 years ago, it was the other way around. Everybody was looking for a job in the towns, and now we can't compete. I mean, we used to have the best benefits out there, but all the private, in order to have employees, now have stepped up and 
gone way beyond what we're offering. Ron, are you are you uh, putting the mechanic out at, is it about $23 an hour? Well, I got a floating scale right now just to, it's up to 27. I'll pay up to 27, but it's going to depend on experience. I mean, I'm not going to pay somebody that's not really a real good qualification of a mechanic $27 an hour I mean there's a lot of flexibility in the mechanic side that I mean so I don't I I have an, an actual set number I have a set number that I can go to but I haven't depends on the person I mean I'm willing to take somebody that has not a real lot of mechanic experience, but has that general general knowledge. And I'll, you know, the pay would be made accordingly. I mean, it just seems like you've gone a long time not being able to find anybody for this position as an example. Yeah, well, like I said, a lot of that has to do that I haven't had the time to uh, spend to put it out there. I put it in the Greenfield Recorder. I put it on Facebook. I got zero response. I didn't even get one person to call to see what kind of money <laughs> was. With it struck me as being odd. But then you got all the other towns that are had been looking for help, too. I mean, not for a mechanic position, but... Um, and I've talked to several towns, and they've had all kinds of trouble finding somebody to, you know, qualified to apply. It's just a tough, tough situation out there right now. Yeah, and I will note it, note that um, I think at least two and maybe three other towns in Franklin County were op, were advertising for mechanics earlier this year as well. Hey, uh, Tom, Tom Hutchinson, is it possible to uh, find out how much Northfield pays there, the position that we're looking to create here, just for as a reference? It might be helpful. Please. Sure. Thank you. So, t t Tom, just from a, a, a process perspective, um, at w w what month do we start actually voting on the budget? I, I know... I know the go the governor's coming out with his budget in two weeks. They say two to three weeks. Um, yeah. Um, well, you you can vote whenever you want. Typically, we hear from all the departments, and then if there are any additional questions, we can bring people back in, you know, for final arguments. And um, and and there's usually two or three weeks where it's just uh, going through everything and uh and voting on it by that time we'll have the money articles for the warrant too so um and what wh when are, when are the capital requests all uh, uh submitted uh they're already submitted uh the capital improvements planning committee is due to report the first week in february we so, only so we got two we got two requests both from ron All right, so, so the next time we consider um, the highway department operating budget, we'll be considering at the same time that we're considering the highway department capital budget request, right? Well, well there'll be two different, two different considerations, but around the same time. Yeah, it, it's usually, you know, the, um, in, in March, because you usually sign, you kind of have to sign the warrant by mid-April. It's good to sign it in early April. So um, having everything wrapped up by the end of March is, is pretty much the target. And, and I, you know, I come out with my preliminary budget the beginning of March, so that's a month, four meetings to kick all the different figures around. So are we all good? Yeah, thank you. In terms of finance committee, uh, Maya 
I mean, uh, Brianna and Steve, do you have any other? I'm, I'm fine. I've, I've said my piece. I'm just wondering about some of the, the uh, variances in 2020 expended versus the budget. There is no expended in 2021. That won't, it's only half your work. But say on the repairs and the salt and sand, why those variances are there? What happened? From the budget, Rod, yeah, can you talk can... to that. I'm sure. Yep. What Tom's put on the screen is for us to look at. Yeah, I don't have it. I'm on the phone. Oh, okay, that's so. Dangerous. Yeah, so so um, I know some of the salt difference was due to whether the winter was hard or not. Um, so that's part of that. And Ron, you can speak to what repairs were necessary. The, the, the thing about the repairs budget is um, it's repairs are generally expensive. So it's difficult to obviously predict what you're going to need repaired. That's one of the reasons that, we, that we've been trying to go to a five-year replacement schedule for equipment so we don't have to repair it, um, or at least only rarely um and oh. and you know if you oh. do have to re re repair something in the middle of the year it can be very expensive and if it's not in your budget it has to come from the reserve fund so you know we're um it's 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 a guessing game but uh ron i don't know you uh t talk a little bit more about your experience with the repair budget yeah well we're working on it um the trucks are now we're, we're in the process of replacing the trucks and that will make a big difference as far as the repair bills go because um, hopefully the newer trucks will be not spending as much we've held off on replacing the trucks because of the new trucks there for a long time pretty much since 2007 have been a serious issue with not being um, dependable and so I've held on to our older trucks. They've now pretty much, from what I can tell, got a lot of the emission problems straightened out, so they're not having nearly anywhere near as many um, problems as they did. It's 2012 through 14 was a really, really bad time for trucks. I know several towns um, around buy a brand new truck and we're lucky if they could use it a month out of a year because of just the truck just had problems. Um, so we've replaced, we're in the process of right now of getting our second new truck and I'm actually asking for a third one this year. But once we get them replaced, we should, our repair bill should be, it should have a huge impact on my um, what it costs to repair. Some of the thing, something, it's hard to go by. I, I try to do the numbers, you know, for different um, sub items. But in the beginning, when I first took over, the finance committee told me that they didn't care about, they basically, all they cared about was the bottom line. And now I guess it's, I got to pay more attention to how I'm, budget in my money because it sounds like a, the new finance committee or the later one here is um, really looking at each sub item. Um, it wasn't the case. I, when I first took over, they told me that they didn't care as long as my numbers were not going over um, on my total. So. I guess I'm going to have to spend more time, you know, it's hard because when you, between materials and sub sublet, which is when I hire contractors or hire somebody to do work, it varies so drastically depending on the year, depending on what's happened weather-wise. Um, well... Ron, the, pr the pr just, question was to ask about your request for 2022. It seems that in prior years, 
this is the only item that you've gone well above the budget in 2018, 19, and 20. So I was just asking if, are you expecting any big repairs or deferred maintenance or stuff that you're now getting around to repairing? That's really the question. No. Is that enough? enough I, I'm there. I, honestly, I'm trying, I'm shooting to stay under my $60,000 okay. for this year. That's all the question was. Thank you very oh, much. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Sorry. Yep. Well, Ron, a similar question comes with like your salt budget. You budget about 60,000. Some years it's 16. Is that just a year we didn't have very much in the way of ice? Right. Uh, yes, that year was um, 20. Sure. We had, uh, I'm a little confused at that number. Oh, it's backwards. That's why. The sand number, the sand is what, <laughs> ah, the okay. sand and the salt is reversed in that year. It's got to be what the problem is there. <laughs> well, that'd be good to know. Okay. Yeah, the sand, see the sand is 46. Yeah. yeah. The sand is forty six thousand five hundred, and the salt is sixteen thousand five hundred. Okay, that's what you've got. I'm quite sure that them numbers are reversed. Okay, I'll I'll, I'll make sure that's fixed. From a distance, they do look a lot alike, you know. <laughs> I have a question, Tom. And that may possibly a request, given that the highway budget is the. Uh, one of the largest individual department budgets we're looking at this year, other than the schools, is it possible to, for the fiscal year 21, to uh, present the, uh, you can't put it on a, a, like, but ex actual expended, if it's possible to send from Mike Coachella the uh, year to date expenditures that have been incurred um, to see how we are, you know, actual versus budget. I mean, pretty soon Mike should have the, uh, Numbers for the six months into December 31st, right? It's yes. possible to extrapolate that from the Excel. He sends out usually a, a master Excel spreadsheet, you know, of every single department by line item, if it's possible to do that for the highway department. For the other departments, I'm not, I don't particularly need it because comparatively their budgets are so much less detailed and smaller, you know? But that would be helpful, please, if you could. <coughs> I'll, I'll, I'd like to make a note that since I've been highway superintendent, I haven't gone over my budget. Um, I did one year with the salt, but that was finance committee told me to go ahead and fill my salt shed that year. Um, but I haven't gone over my budget since I've been here. How long you Just made a little note. How long have you been ahead of finance or being the highway department, Ron? Excuse me? How long, have, when did you become head of highway department? Five years ago? 2013. Okay. April 2013. Almost seven, eight years ago. Okay. Sounds and, good. Yeah, and just, you know, I, since, since, Alan, since you did sort of obliquely reference it, um, the, the the your your frontier school committee budget committee they've already made the determination that the budget the school budget this year will be level services so not level funding but a level services budget so um it's going to be uh yeah it's uh, it's a pandemic budget for sure yeah yeah thank you i mean the salaries will go up because the union contracts have already negotiated that that's that's cool. right but and and then everything else there's there's been, uh, you know, uh, uh, spending freezes all year long, yeah, just on, on 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 every account. Yeah, understood. Thank you. Yep. Are we good with Ron? Thank you, Ron. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Ron. <laughs> Thank you very much, okay. Ron. Thank you. All right. Thank you, everyone. Y'all have a good night now. You too. Thank you. You know, a couple of late nights the last couple of days. So, items not anticipated. Tom, do we have any items not anticipated? Uh, I don't believe so. 
You have an update? Uh, yeah, just a few things. Um, I I will say I've been I've been busy on a, on a number of items. Some of them having to do with this this particular meeting. Um, some of them things coming up, and you'll hear about them. Uh, but uh, in uh, in committee news, we are definitely still looking for somebody for the trails committee, um, or or we're actually looking for a trails committee. <laughs> so we don't we don't have that at this point. Um, and you know there is one, um, and I especially would like to see trails on our GIS system. But uh, we just had a request to see if anybody was interested. And in, you know I think maybe one person had expressed interest over the last year or so, but really there hasn't been much. Uh, so if you do know anybody who might be interested, let me know. Or Louise, thank you. Um, as Bob mentioned, there were just two capital requests. Uh, one for a large highway truck, which we've been expecting, and another for a paving project. I have forwarded these. I have forwarded these to the Capital Improvements Planning Committee, uh, and again, they're due to report back in uh, early February with their recommendation. Uh, in departmental news, <clears throat> I've now got 24 out of 37 line item budget proposals submitted. Uh, not a great response. They were due uh, before Christmas, uh, but not too bad. Uh, as in previous years, budgets not submitted by December 24th may be level funded. I warned everybody very distinctly in the budget memo that if they didn't get it to me, uh, they might be level funded. So um, we, we will have numbers going forward. Um, of course, I, I hope to get active responses from everybody. Um, who are you missing? I who are you missing? Oh, who are you oh, uh, a lot of them. There's 13 of them. But, um, wow. So I'm 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 gonna I'm gonna get them, or or if, or they'll be level to, funded. All right. If you, if you need to resort to more public shaming, uh, you know, let us know. Yeah, I was gonna say, you can send us that list in an email. Um. <laughs> You can be waiting for them at the transfer station. Yeah. Um, I discovered our email system had been rejecting invoices for Baker office supplies since spring. Uh, this was uh, for the incredibly IT savvy. It was at the DMARC level. So we're not able to whitelist them. Uh, with this with this vendor warrant, we've caught up with this fiscal year's bills, uh, but we will have Baker's bills for a prior fiscal year totaling uh, $1,064 to pay at the next town meeting. Our IT consultant has offered to help them set up their email differently, but they will send our invoices through the Postal Service for the foreseeable future. And the, uh, the new round of Community Compact Best Practice Grant Possibilities is out. Since we did not get the substantially larger Community Compact IT grant we applied for, I've asked the affected parties to draft proposals for this smaller grant. This would probably involve getting a tablet for the assessors and a cybersecurity plan for the town. And just uh, one more note, um, uh, someone already noted that the, the CARES funds uh, now are available through the end of, uh, until December 2021. So that act has been extended. That's great news. We did not have all of our money allocated and so do have more money that is available for the schools. And I, I've let Shelley, uh, the the frontier business manager know that because she was asking. So that's uh, that is my update for now. So t t Tom, I, I've actually um, been curious about this the, the cares um, amounts that that are left over. 
<clears throat> and um, I've tried I've tried to get sort of this, the schools to be less conservative about this. They're they're so afraid of being audited and having really bad things happen, um, which is a reasonable fear. But the you know what when you actually look nationwide to see what other communities are doing, and uh, you know the, the thing that I that that caught my uh, eye was Oregon, and how Oregon made a, st a finding. The state government made a finding that the historically uh, underserved communities are being impacted by COVID to a greater degree than wealthier communities. And that therefore they made cash grants to people, um, that, that, you know, to, to poor people. Um, and that that's, that's an acceptable uh, CARES Act expense. Mm. And, and uh, you know, we, we've just been approaching this from a very conservative, perspective and um uh, you know i i don't i, I don't know that that you know it, to, 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 uh, my understanding is there's a, a considerable amount of money that still in uh could be spent and the school the school can spend will be spending some of it but my understanding is that there's um a lot left the tens of thousands left um yes um, when you apply, there are categories that you can choose, and these were laid out in the original legislation. Uh, and there were there were also, you know, FEMA categories that we ended up not having any eligible applications for anyway. Um, and I, you know, I know some towns like Deerfield have spent their entire amount. So so that's that's kind of interesting. Um, I know they had a lot more cases than we did. So, and you know, they had emergency workers out and all that sort of stuff. So, much more complicated situation there. Uh, but yeah, um, I'm all for spending things on things that are allowed. And if they're going to allow more things, I think that's great. Uh, yeah, cash grants sound good to me. Um, I don't know, as as opposed to giving the money back. <laughs> Uh, if those are the two um, that, options. That said, that, that said uh, I'm not sure of the relationship with Frontier. I'm very confident that, you know, Conway Grammar School, anything that's related to the pandemic is, um, is probably reimbursable for the Conway Grammar School. Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't know. Um, I'll keep beating this, beating this horse for a while, though. So wait, Phil, you just think that we should be spending more money than we are? <laughs> well, um, I, I like spending money when it's not our town's money. Um, so I, <laughs> that, so I, I don't have any problem spending money when it's not our town's money. Um, and, and this is one of those things that if we don't spend it, we give it back. So it's easier something like, to ask for uh, forgiveness than it is to ask for permission, right? Well, no, I mean, the, 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 when I found out that cash grants to your residents are permissible, um, that kind of, yeah, the, a, a, and, you know, lawful and it's been court approved and all that and various states have rolled these programs out. I'm like, why haven't we? So I... Could we do that something like funding the lunch program? Although schools not. I mean, that, see that, that, would be, uh, that would be a good example because we're losing our shirt. We, we lose hundreds of dollars every day that the school is open for yeah. our lunch program. Yeah. Um, yeah and, uh, you know, that, and, and, but that's, that's a function also of the fact that it's free lunches for everybody and you can't charge. You, you can't receive income on your lunch program, but all your expenses are the same. So we used to come close to breaking even. Now we're looking to avoid six-figure losses. Um, Those feel like COVID-related uh, expenses. Yeah, they do. Well, they do. Yeah, I think Bill's point is like it's that's um, other people are using COVID funds for those kinds of losses. So why aren't we? Yeah. So we got to get us get, get ourselves something to vote on. <laughs> mm. 
But, Who would so, write yeah. that? The school committee? I mean, where where would it, it's no, that's that's the town's. You know that that's that's why the, that's why the school has to find out from Tom how much is in it because it it comes through the towns. It's the towns that are eligible, and the schools are one of the. Well, main... and we'll know when we've done the reconciliation round, right? Which is you know it's due like the twenty first or something, right? Okay. Uh, Concerns of the selectmen. Anybody have any concerns? It doesn't feel like a fresh new year. That's what I'll say. <laughs> it feels like 2020 is continuing. That's this my concern. Week. Yeah. Maybe not after this week. <sighs> um, Tom, do we have any mail? The, 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 this, this week is Frontier and you and Conway Grammar School uh, budget uh, uh, is we're doing I'm doing a t tomorrow and Wednesday is big long budget things with with our schools so we're going to get real solid numbers and hopefully get answers to some of these questions but um, it's that time of year the fun is just beginning <laughs> Tom is there any mail uh, not that I have for everybody here Okay. Announcements? It's it's nice to it's nice to visit with the uh with with the new uh finance committee though. The, with our Yes. This would be the first official visit with the reconstituted new finance committee. Good to see you all. Yeah. Okay. So Thank our you. next our next meeting is next Monday. We're going into a meeting every Monday now, be six o'clock again. And it'll be uh, public safety for the budgets. Okay. Um, typically, I do not ask the tree warden or the animal control officer in um, because they have relatively Good. small budgets. It's usually police, fire, and ambulance, and not even emergency management because that, there's not a lot of discretionary money in there either. So do we have an executive session? Uh, I have I have some updates if anyone's interested. Okay. Yeah, I have updates too. <laughs> okay. Well, yes. Yeah. Well, it's in the agenda, but sometimes it's no. So. Okay. So we're gonna then I'm I'm gonna make a motion that we move into executive session, and that we will adjourn from executive session uh, directly directly out to adjourn both meetings. Sounds good. So we have to do it by roll call. So I hear a that's good from Erica. Yeah. Yep. That's good from Phil and a that's good from me. So we will do that. Bye bye. Yeah. <laughs> so we're in executive session. <laughs>